with was was it that now? Let me know what's the name. Hey, was it the university? Now let's say for a lot of PhD, we have done what? Only Bokhara Ali Amli, Prosperi Gona Naiko, Chalpur Gona Naiko, Kita, Surviving the Sanctuary City, Boy, let's say, Wako Kitabo. You let's say recently Fisher Fiskin Book Prize, Honorable Mention. पाको सा यो चाहिए अमेरिकन स्टडीज एसोसिएशन ने दिए हो अन्य वहाँ को काम चाहिए ग्लोबल पॉलिटिक्स ऑफ असाइलम इंटरेस्टिंग मोबिलिटीज नेपाली डायस्पोरा और सोशल इनिक्वलिटी संबंधित सा वहाँ को काम और उसे विभिन्न जोड़ों में आप प्रकाशन बाबत सा जस्तो एंट्रोपोलॉजी ऑफ वर्क रिव्यू पैसिफिक uh, studies in Nepali history and society, June Journal Zane, but a focus in Monsa, Journal of Royal Anthropological Institute, Rasamaza Denman, Samaza Denman, one of the translated work, Zet Haptek was Ali Pila. Some say Azako Chalfalko or Bokta, but discuss and book co, discuss and say any Jameson Monsa, Wale Oile Sangwa, Department of Government and Sociology, Georgia College and State University. My assistant professor Guru Makam for the Unsa. While Yell Water, two thousand twenty, PhD gone bow, Nepal name Waku Kantu. Oh, Walaku Pony, your article, Lady Silly Tabigatim. Mapping local federalism in Nepal and exercise in constitutional cartography. My other, say to Sinasco, twenty two go Kitamasa Pekosa, or Kere Jordan Masa Pekosa. Uh, recently, I am the Prakashan Goreko Federal Conan Drum Bonni, Sarah Paman Lady Goreko Kitamapun, two articles, say, includes a Eti Bonera Sai, Gole Warla Shot of Gorde, more floor say, Tina Ziladinsu, especially at the Amico to presentation say, video recording, sir, you say, clear. Thank you, uh, Missy. <coughs> Sorry, my name is Ali. I'll give you Thank you everybody for coming here at the Samai Nika Vinamoyo and especially you, Martin Chota, and I coming here presenting different parts of your Kitab project on the Kitab project. So, this is time of coming. So, Ruchi, Ramesi, Devinazi, and you all did just in meeting them over the years and I'm really thankful for this organizer. So, Mali, this book is written in English and I prepared parts of it in English. So, I hope that's okay. <laughs> so, Yo Yo, book cover, thinking about surviving the sanctuary city, the asylum city work in Nepal, New York, it's a Washington University, or University of Washington Press, but the last year, name, name, so I go through. So, before I go into it, I just want to say a few words like, as a way of introduction to the book, and what it is about. Who its audiences are, they were city also actually, coastal and and what I hope it might achieve as a book. So so I was asked to provide a context, <laughs> a context for an overview of you know, the structure or content of the book, or one of I'm a trained anthropologist. So any context one of I will automatically go into ethnographic context of you know, and the research context. Um, the book actually deals with both research contexts, Nepali, Nepal, and U.S. But as a woman, I talk more about the U.S. context. Like Nepali for political context, you all are an expert, not me. So, I don't know if I'm going to say So, I would like to read an ethnographic or a vignette, or like Xana, another case of uh, um, asylum. How is it as work and how people go to asylum in the process theory in council? That we might not have time. Let's see. Um, so the book is, as I said, written with various audiences in mind. As an academic book, uh, it does engage the like, theoretical debates in anthropology, mostly critical asylum and refugee study, US immigration, enforcement, uh, border studies, this and and at the same time, South Asian diaspora, or Asian American studies, so specific debates, so language and racialization, so specific chapters, I would say, to touch on those major theoretical frameworks. So, second, as a documentation of the worldview, lived experiences of Nepali living abroad, especially Nepali migrants and asylum seekers, 
I'm hoping that it adds to an ongoing efforts and dialogue of, of, um, around migrant advocacy, activism, and um, organizing legalization, which Luna is here, you know, works with solidarity. She was at Abhika, so I'll go into it so that I can't just be like a theory that. Um, so that I hope you know, it's a dialogue with many activists, not just only in the US, elsewhere as well, which have similar issues of social justice, workers' rights, and human rights. So how is it relevant? Specific case phenomena, but maybe some kind of conversations. And they're already happening, and I know activists are doing it. But as academics, how can it be useful also for non-academic readership? Second to say few. Third audience saying, um, because it's about US immigration, asylum, especially immigration enforcement program provider, I did present to uh, United States the Citizenship and Immigration Services on DC Nazanda last year, uh, two years ago. Book say I will check I with the key of the um, because those are the asylum officers, and like the lawyers uh, who are the front line of dealing with asylum seekers, migrants, and uh, one who has even a relevant chapter's talk. They, they knew more about you know, the language and the Kinavani. Some of my informants are also lawyers and adults. So that's a few words. And lastly, just all the, actually, Nepalis, not only Nepali migrants in the US, Nepali diaspora. Nepali elsewhere, <coughs> actually I've left the US, research of Kinetic PhD of Kinetic I've left the US, I've not lived in the US, 10 years. Keep going back and forth, obviously. But I've been in the US, and I've been in the US, and I've been in Hong Kong, Malaysia, and I've been in the So, very distinct historical migration trajectories, these are different different spots, but there are also some overlaps. So, Yota community, what can you? Not learn phenomenon, but what are some of the challenges and what are points of the divergent issues that Nepali migrants face elsewhere? Theoretical insight, hopefully, you know, when I second chapter start. So, Titi uh, Gwane, Titi maybe I will actually give you a tip of the ethnographic context in my blocks here. New York City, man. Look at Nepali New York, there's a chapter, uh, in the second chapter, in the second chapter. I'll just read. So please bear with me, it's an ethnographic context only. Once a week, every Sunday, from morning until early evening, one can observe a continuous flow of working men and women, usually in small groups, making their way from Roosevelt Avenue and 71st Street toward Woodside Avenue to the our office. Tucked away in a fairly quiet residential street of a middle-income migrant neighborhood in Woodside with an elementary school in front and a Korean church next door, this grassroots community center is not exactly conspicuous to visitors and attendees unfamiliar with non-commercial parts of the East. I don't know if you have families there in New York, the Jackson Heights, and the movies. The movies. So indeed, as many of my Nepali um, Inter uh, informants and participants from the language English for Impairment class and volunteers mentioned on more than one occasion, if it were not for the recently painted Fibela, then recently painted one of the door in bright red and uh, bright red and writ Abhika, written in Nepali. I don't know if I can. So uh, maybe I'll just take a break and say that. Luna Antiwaza Hamza she is one of the, the founders of this organization. And I've known Luna Di for a while, but this is when we actually work together. It hopefully brings back his own fond memory, so you'll see her in the pictures too. Um, so, popularly known as Little India, among predominantly South Asian New Yorkers and tourists alike, the commercial center of Jackson Heights, which is never in the avenues, is full of colorful shop fronts, displaying salaries and lingas. Large holding boards advertising the latest Hollywood actor films, music, uh, stores blasting the latest songs that overpower the quiet presence of Abhika, as well as its community members and attendees. The newly, the then newly arrived Nepali speaking migrants, <coughs> primarily from the Indian subcontinent. So, this community center offers an escape, temporarily from the hustling and non stop consumer related activities in this part of Jackson. The men and women making their way discreetly to the single story or the double story the community center are here to attend one of the several English classes facilitated twice a week by six to seven male and female volunteers, including myself. 
So I was also a volunteer, English teacher, board member teacher for a few years. That as a <coughs> as an immersion concept, there was one concept, that's one context of my immersion in the community of Myanmar. Um, so Adhikar is an important space for grassroots activism made possible by the vibrant gathering of multi-ethnic and multilingual people from the, well, I, I mean, I find it interesting that we use Nepali, Rikmala, and Diaspora, you know, so they're differently situated experiences of labor, legality, and struggle to survive in the U.S. So, <coughs> Oracle, if Adhikar stood, actually, I would just be doing more, it's because they have been involved or interested, because they have what kind of work Adhikar did, community organizing, and if you recognize somebody there, <laughs> Uh, so domestic workers' rights, human rights, workers' rights are Kumar. This was back in 2009 or nine or ten, I think. And then I'll say more about other work, but sort of I was. That's how I got into uh, Nepali community in New York. Sometimes you can live in the same place. I'm sure even Kathmandu, not in Boston, not in unless you actually tell you what day to day interaction was, and you actually don't know the larger what people are doing. The day to day struggles. So, so New York is not that different from many other cities in that sense. Um, so, if Adhikar stood at one extreme of migrant survival, gathering space for making sense of their social world and working out their suffering, the asylum legal spaces to state offices throughout the city, New York City, represented everything foreign and that the community center was not. Nepalis for whom I provided Nepali English interpretation. So do it at context, that's the dual bibliographic context. Oh, let's say I was a <clears throat> legal interpreter. So I actually use what I call participant interpretation. I was a participant interpreter, meaning like a participant observation of anthropologist and social study, Simonako and so on. You, uh, that's what I did in Adhikar. When I participated, I observed, took notes, interviews. But that are at asylum sp institutional spaces do include human rights agencies, um, private law firms. Courtroom, I was uh, mostly participant interpreter. Courtroom, I never interpreted. It was only human rights agency, the law firms. So as an interpreter, I was there, present, the cases of them. So a little bit um, about who Nepali is, asylum claims, the real spaces in the city, mostly uh, arriving through time. And this did a research to give you a context 2009 to 2012. So through time, man, Mostly, they were going through um, the asylum legalization or awaiting decisions of spaces. Um, they are enmeshed in different stages. So, booklets, uh, you first the asylum backstage is a very concept where actually, Ogari interview, Ogari, cost to cost struggle, the struggle, what kind of backstage they go through. Lawyers like Hidden Ogari, the kind of resourceful um, uh, fellow of the Nepalese, of their relatives, of the lawyers, of the Hidden these are all background work that actually people do because it is interrupting their work. So, Kama Zanam, maybe you spending money, you know, that's time, energy, and uh, sort of ultimately emotionally draining kind of energy. Maybe A versus B versus B, Lego Math, why not? So, that's the part I actually have to address. So how does it work? So despite you coming with different contexts from early uh, two, three years, you know, this uh, back and forth, uh, this, so you think the asylum institution space is going to be higher for trees and it is um, Despite yeah, the visible differences of these spaces, my interlocutors, Nepali speaking interlocutors, all shared a common concern for what they interpreted. And I gradually learned as their social world of suffering because a substantial and enduring consequence of surviving rather than thriving in America. So and keep that say then it builds outward okay, uh, from, from there, from that. So you know, um, you know dukkha is a generic thing, mental suffering dukkha that was going on even. But I kept running into people saying um, you know things like, you know, every Nepali. When you English you know, an English uh, audience represent you know, you Nepali, know, if you translate it, you know, put it up there. Book matter by Nepali and foreign supplements, but it's a transliterated Nepalese. It's by Washington. 
Um, this is Nepal, it is because of the personal so that the key times of money, Kagos, Horga China, when he Kagos back to China, when the Palai Hatter. So, Cossack, you know, the Poisa Kutsa money, they don't have work on it. So, over time, you know, for example, it took me two years to make papers. I had to work hard. We suffered a lot. The suffering, work, the papers, and this entangled thing that I kept hearing in all these cases. <coughs> The, in a way, because I didn't know, it was a good thing. Kagas Banamnekeer, that was a concept. I take it as a concept, I use it as a concept. The book, Malai Thanawa, the Kina, you know, as all anthropologists who are the ethnographers, when you don't know, you actually ask questions, you don't know, you know, they get more responses from people. They met the in Okay, then I'll tell you. They were I was young, so everybody was baby and I. Now when I go out, it's like, I, baby. But in the middle of the you know, these are the spaces. It's the come, it's the become the And and then, as I started interpreting these spaces, I you know, like you know, there is some kind of connection. They're interconnected. You have to not because they're just all Nepal speaking migrants going there. That a legalization path here back there. Work was deeply connected. And you saw this too, but then you know. Makes it easy. If you turn it, you don't actually ask you know, like years later uh, when you start writing and thinking about it. So, what is the larger argument? Book must say, okay, then it helped me ask this question. Also, okay. the legalization pathway, specifically asylum seeking, had come to be interpreted by people on the same continuum as work, as other work to think with their time, labor, energy, trouble. So I wasn't interested just, okay, the Kalas Banani is a concept, so it's a good, you know, cultural phenomenon, now let me run with it. That everybody knows. I'm not interested in that. And what the book does is how, and more important, you know, what are its uses, the Kalas Banani phenomenon, the suffering, if they're tied together and people are talking about it. So what are its uses? Social injuries, one of the social wound, um, uh, Wendy Brown, She's a political scientist. She talks about both social wounds. Their social injuries. A colleague, a friend, has a brilliant book about policing in the U.S. and how it, of the black uh, communities and for years and generations. So that kind of the social injury costumes. So it, it had been, I guess, outsider insider. Go Google watch talk about it during uh, Q and A. I can go into that. But, uh, um, for me, it's it's the ethics of proximity that was more important than am I. In, distant enough is what I were observing and I've been living there for a long time so I knew some of the struggles and issues and so uh, but also then what are the ethics of proximity it's actually you won't be the most surprised that you learn you realize that you don't know so much because it's a day-to-day -day and you don't have to go through so um, and that's where I come from you know a dialogical ethnography in Canada um, and if you I can do on Q&A Positionality or self reflexivity, the questions that I have taken. So, so that was the main um, ethnographic context. You know. So, I was going through these spaces and meeting people. And so, this question, I, uh, this research question, that's what it's trying to do. So, but just like the seemingly, um, going back to the passages I did, Buko, distinct research field sites where I locate myself, the book also engages with the dual context of migration. How Nepali out migration coincided with the socio political context in the US. Nepali migration to the US, I categorize, Mira Akhuni, broadly categorized into three groups. It was a three generation bundle in the second chapter I do it. Um, so, post you, people arriving as postgraduate students, professional, 50s, 60s, and then second group to family really, uh, the family uh, sponsorship, that was students really, work visa. My family went as a family. Sponsorship, 90s, na. and then you have the Civil War period, 2001, where he ate someone, 90. So that, I didn't want to go into Nuntabaisa, but you already know those are the mass migration, you know, Nepali to the US, not only to the US, elsewhere, but these are the markers. But I will also not, not go into the visa types, I'm sure you already know the types of visas, deadlines, paperwork, Myanmar government. So, what I want to talk about, as a polarity, is the U.S. immigration and asylum politics. In 2009, the 12 was my research site, but I'm going to take you back to the 9-11 context, the 9-11 political context, what kind of rules, laws, or 
yeah, on that kind of the kind of policing surveillance point of view, you know, and, and then how migrant communities sort of um, came out on the internet when the protests or movement was. So it's like a back and forth backlash with Safi, you know, how they go um, restricted immigration and so this stuff, so then progress, then so anyway, that the few pendulum map, I want to take you back to the, the decade, what I call the post 9-11 decade, uh, I'm sure everybody knows the, the US war on terror outside Kemaya, the post Kemaya, Kemaya, right? So, but at the same time, the post 9-11 decade has witnessed a state, steady tapering of the condition of possibility for personal immigration as a civil law issue. Mm -hmm. So making it difficult to disengage from the debate of logic of criminality, meaning racialized minorities, ethnic migrant communities already, including Nepalese, and, and, and it's also a class component is important here, the working class migrants already. Uh, of a criminal, they were criminalized, you know, police heavily serving the God, God at work. New York City, so sanctuary cities and they were out. So Zunki sanctuary city and other cities in the U.S. that like the theater, you federal, they lot in pass for it. Communities are like the police got the fine and they, so that they would report crimes or uh, education needs or health care issues. Or, so those are sanctuary cities from them. Got it. So that's one of the reasons why Nepal, Nepal, New York City, sorry, is a sanctuary city. Or you can start. But at the same time, I complicate that. So sanctuary yeah. city can go to what happened, realization, maybe God is like, and the undocumented by boss, you know, government calls it me. And labor, how does that play out in a sanctuary city? They were not the surviving, they were not fighting in these sanctuary cities either. They were, um, so <coughs> there was a suffering, a survivor. So, or for you, war on terror is a federal immigration enforcement lobbied to enable local enforcement to China. Local enforcement, state, city, uh, local uh, court. So, basically, in 2002, uh, the US Department of Justice issued a statement saying, you know, declaring local police have an inherent authority to enforce all aspects of immigration law. So, that was a big thing. That like the immigration and nationalization service could be totally under. Local, so the police level, you want to enforce on the file coming down. Uh, so that was immediately after 2011 events. Internally, what I call interior immigration enforcement, these were happening. Right? So people were more and more. Um, well, obviously, if you, if you don't have papers, then you're not less likely to go out. Jobs, but it's so structurally, they've had to take their jobs under the table legally. Right? So there were all, all these issues. So. Orco, institutionalization of oil, we take it for granted, Department of Homeland Security. So, you know, there is a particular moment in time that happened, and then there's what's the key oil, mindset, and all of that affect how ICE, it's like, oh, all of these are your acronyms, are, so we take it for granted, but those are different. And there are other kinds of restrictive immigration policies for sure, but your agencies are the key. So, that's why I focus on your time, you can see how much. Um, the effects, you know, the everyday effects wasn't just like anti-immigration sentiments, restricted immigration laws, the policing of, as I said, in undocumented migrants, in in general, this heightened sense of uh, um, insecurity, I think, separating not just citizens from non-citizens, citizens of criminal elements, did happen. So at the same time, border customs and border protection then they started becoming directly in charge of asylum decisions. Right? So arbitrarily, asylum decisions are happening. There's a separate history. People are interested in the asylum institutional custody that go by the El Salvador in the 80s. Um, Salvador, sort of uh, Central America matter, Afro refugee. How, how was that asylum as a law was implemented, the cost and what how, what kind of suffering testimonials were generated through time. Right? And so it, the asylum infrastructure, but if I go into that, it has gone through several of transformation, evolution, on my um, idea, to a time that's an ad hoc period. So I won't go into details about affirmative, defensive um, stages. So I'll get back to Kosari. <coughs> In practice, so this widened category of uh, the non citizens that keep on running into types of temporarized, legally documented non criminals, meaning workers were surveilled and this indiscriminately. But at the same time, the arbitrary granting of asylum, the asylum pathways for however, it, it, it seemed 
is it a liberal uh, government ko pata ko bini and no ba ko bini hai ko feel so but that's the trick like ek dana lai huna sakta hai and then the thalus is in line so i draw on you uh, anthropologist nicolas de genova was we uh, school concept of deportability deportation deportability say legally ta pai ko people who remain who are deportable deportation the ones who have to what about millions who do not get deported they become deportable reserve of um, labor resources they you know okay and that's nothing new us has that japan has all all big hard immigration systems on it the um student visa that one so and i think um to to say large research context to but at the same time 2006 nans when pro immigrant mass mobilization day to they like so adika was big part of it i mean you know if you know as here in the end we were there and we and it was uh, the thing the euphoria was just they all in the end on top and on top and they say look yes we are illegal but we are not criminals by that okay. you know? so that was the first time uh, us was to that third time now so 2000 pro immigrant mobilization protests in public spaces where um or about other things than attempt to demonstrate to the state and the american public that quote of illegal aliens were not criminal aliens but were hard working i mean we hear all the time that like, we we contribute to the economy to the society uh and so that like so this is also precursor to obama right obama could have been in the nation as goda in the vote see say poe they yes we can that it comes from you know, a whole group of people behind um that other the picture there there you go <coughs> so this is the theory um and a book talks about deals into that attention to the your immigration nation so the key boy when you have seen you maybe several things happened right it's another legalization right it's a criminal hyena um so i don't Uh, the slide there but i'll just read uh, but at the same time as a public space not the undocumented group were not criminals in reality then it was out in the open and sort of und- and then deserving undocumented migrants and undeserving you know more category started the like social control the city means and the thing so okay by the time there then um mobilization mass mobilization everything happened and by the time obama took office the home and security state was only based on the 2003 model that was um, at the height of managing policing you know, disciplining uh, migrant workers on job in the migrant workers okay so you're not criminals but then you are you deserving of being in the path of legalization so in some ways every liberal of like uh, immigration policy path to legalization you know that there were all these more stringent ways in which that path became more difficult it's a kind of i would i say kind of social control it's a by the by the of course talking and all that but but then at the same time asylum was a like asylum process was like i mean not anybody could just go online yeah that came so denied and so so all these other institutions were also yeah the funding they could you know just the human rights agency and all that so they unless the and the whole debate of credibility that i got so claims were deemed incredible if they went through human rights agencies that are back away so at the same time in between the civic spaces and human rights agencies proliferated so on one hand it's yes you need that on the other so on academic uh, this is where i guess i differ from some of the academics working on looking at asylum and um, human rights now they're critical of human rights uh, language of like the way it's treated so i think it's more complicated than that you know and if people that's the way to survive day to day then you have to use that language you have to use those um, engage because disengagement is not a possibility that by undocumented so especially migrant communities and racialized ethnic communities is what we're working with them and then if you're getting funding if you're getting support long term collage you have to use the language to say sure long term and long term so it's very tricky that's why this topic every step social control how that work and, and then trapped to me if other uh, workers and nepal migrants um you know so i see so as this new setting when in hali was more private or intimate and you know, um okay on top of the migrants are there but it has a sort of instead of uh, let's say um harassing them 
if you harass employers who hire undocumented migrants, they're then less likely to hire undocumented migrants who, or let's say, restaurant owners, if they're not necessarily established ones, so the layers, layers, and that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, again, there's a class and gender uh, ethnicity coincide in interesting ways. Um, if, should I keep going here? Well, I think I can stop. But that's the context. Nah. So if I tell you everything, the way I did, <laughs> you'll know the whole thing. But that's a, I'll just take a second to really kick it because the layout of the chapters in. So introduction mostly I, I already read. I mean, um, Ani, so located next to Nepal in New York, there's a big data state. Um, it's a big state. Um, state uh, political moment. Uh, Nepal is the state of the state. Political moments in Nepal. U.S. man mass migration back over, especially in New York, man. I mean, with the lens of the whole social world of Dukkha, talking about Dukkha, the concept that that was already there all along. Three or four, then I should jump into uh, the logic of female pre credibility, the sorry, testimonial uh, construction and asylum backstage. I actually take you through the backstage, which I I get a lot of cues of who are the actors there, because I also interview them, talk to lawyers, and they will say. Uh, they were on the eco footing. It's like, okay, great, because it was they wanted me to interpret. Others, like, okay, you just interpret. You know, they're like all these barriers. Uh, and depending on Mira Akhme relationships over time with the um, lawyers and advocates, or the other. Um, so I got to learn a lot from both sides. So, um, by saying I provide a specific case of the, sorry, testimonial co construction, but saying the suffering testimony, say, also in the concept of Dukkha that's how they saw. Nepali communities were actually talking about it. At the same time, it, you know, seeking asylum, so I'm talking about the process, I was saying that while seeking asylum, it actually created more injuries, more suffering. And then that, with the irony that I sort of uh, tease out and give it across the answer that you know, after people do, that they get asylum, that this also was something that they can't do, they can't do on them. So it's like they lost a lot of time. <laughs> Not a good. Um, and then I five or six months, so I circled back to Adhikar, the community center. And then, so in a way, the conclusion, uh, paradox of visibility uh, and censorship, say, it's an opening, really. Um, I don't know if I'll <laughs> we'll do the second part of what happens, but uh, you know, when, when people are saying, what are people now saying? What are these the challenges, case of paradox of visibility? That's why I go back to the community and engage with my interlocutors there, activists, friends. Um, so I think one plus, because I was already involved in Adhikar, so I also started seeing it differently, um, the work, and, um, and challenged me in many ways. I mean, you have a lot of inspiring conversations, and the book is, you know, meet all these um, people. Um, everybody else is sort of pseudonym, and I actually asked Runa Didi and Nora Didi, who wrote uh, Adhikar, they're like, yes, this, you know, this is my name. If you're using Adhikar, then he is appointed. <laughs> Ooh, and then I think not uh, masking ooh, uh, name would really have all the meaning of the it's very easy. And, uh, again, like I said, it's the more interested in the positionality, ethnic, uh, ethnographic, it's not any. What are the, the ethics of the proximity, not also have a challenge. And, so, and when people say, come in and out, I am part of that community. I grew up in the US. And I have seen families, continue to see families go through these, not exact situation perhaps, but some ways we all, um, channel one of them. Um, so, and before, I think when I was a grad student, I'd be more ambivalent. Yeah, but I'm not, you know, I didn't live in Nepal for so long, so I, so I don't know. Her. So I think that's like, no. It's like, I, I think it raises more interesting questions and accountability, questions of accountability become more prominent. Uh, and I think in anthropology, we are to take seriously people's lives. And, Day to day, um, what they go through, then you can't hide behind that and say, well, this is what I do, and then that I don't know. So I think it, it complicates actually. Yes, people can ask the questions. So, for sorry, but it came home. And I think so that more conversations can happen rather than I would think. I mean, um, when I say about that, my friends, close friends, and they just continue to engage. And, but I have gone through a lot of transformation, but the work is still the same. Um, so, so basically through the book, then I direct attention to suffering as a lived experience for hope, but how they surfaced uh, variously understood to articulate to let 
unequal, uh, what I call unequally shared terms and conditions of survival for people. So survival also comes into the analytic uh, in the book. Well, I can pass this book. I actually got this for somebody uh, here. So, but uh, Tabe, you know, if you just want to get to. And I think maybe quickly I should add, since Pratishna had Generally. asked me. Generally. Yeah? The questions. Uh, mm. Who, it would say, ethnographically, it's very easy to read Excel at all. And, and I admit, Miracle socialization in academic language, academia, my years and years of, you know, being, I was disciplined right, to write, to read certain books and write a particular way, theoretical frameworks, what they use by me, and how do you engage with, what is your intervention, what is your contribution to this? It is an ultimately academic book, not really. I do weave my ethnography through um, theoretical, through debate or something, but parts of it is, Difficult, even why they already paid for Iran, like reading, oh my god, like you're in the zone, thus they know it. It can be written more simply than this, and, and I take that critique very well. And you know, next time I hope to write more um, fluidly, more accessible. But also, comment is that even um, Nepali may be better for me, Nepali is not everyone's first language here, so you can also make that comment. Who's going to read Nepali literature? Fine. Well, I found the number of in the mosque in Nepal. Do everybody read Nepali? They were high level for literature in Nepali. I don't know. You know that person didn't even speak Nepali. So, you know, and on that note, um, um, but I do hope to write more you know, accessibly and simply. And that's, it's much, much more difficult to tackle with some years of socialization. You know, Unlearned Thank <laughs> 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 Namaste and hello to everyone at Martin Chowdhury and to Dr. Tina Shrestha. It is a pleasure to be here virtually with all of you to discuss Dr. Tina Shrestha's brilliant and beautiful new ethnography, Surviving the Sanctuary City. I'm sure that I've already been introduced, but just in case, my name is Dr. Amy Johnson and I'm an assistant professor of anthropology at Georgia College and State University. What I'd like to do in this time is to provide some remarks based on a review that I'm writing about Surviving the Sanctuary City, which will be published in Sinhas in a forthcoming issue, and then ask one small question to Dr. Shrestha at the end of my remarks. I know that I'm not there in person to hear the back and forth and discussion about the book. Um, I wish I could be there, but I'll be paying attention um, by watching the video to hear what all you pick up from the book as, as interesting and, and relevant. There's very, very much to discuss. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and start my remarks, and I'm going to open with a quote from the book. So everyone wants to hear a good story in this country. This is a quote from Mina, an asylum grantee and former teacher from Manam, Nepal, and is made to the ethnographer Tina Shrestha as a preface to what would become the latest iteration of her asylum-seeking story. In her interview at a Nepali Queen's Cafe, spoken between the rumbling of the above-ground subway, Mina points out that when it comes to asylum in the United States, quote, no one wants to hear the truth, but everyone knows it already, end quote. Mina's words illuminate the central paradox faced by Nepali asylum claimant workers in New York City. Asylum hinges less on the veracity of the story one tells than on the struggle to tell it a struggle that pitches claimants further into precarity and is largely suffered in silence. Tina Shrestha's Surviving the Sanctuary City, Asylum-Seeking Work in Nepali, New York, is a welcome and necessary addition to the literature of the Nepali diaspora and migration studies. In part, this is because how asylum-seeking is performed, let alone experienced among Nepali migrants in America is something of an ethnographic black box. To date, there have been several ethnographies approaching Nepali refugee 
and asylum-seeking claims in the U.S. through the gaze of expert witnesses or social service providers. So these are ethnographies by Carol McGranahan and Heather Hinsman, respectively. Andrew Nelson, in 2022, published a ethnographic study of transnational migration journeys, viscerally depicting the environmental and social political disasters overcome by Nepali migrants determined to reach North America. Sienna Craig's ethnographic monograph, The Ends of Kinship, Connecting Himalayan Lives Between Nepal and New York, traced the ends of migration, permanent resettlement, to examine how Himalayan Nepali communities from Mustang are remade in the New York City boroughs of Brooklyn's and Queens, very close to the areas um, where Shrestha's ethnography is situated. So from these works, readers gain a critical understanding of lives recast through channels of migration and U.S. immigration policy. However, Shrestha's ethnography travels a slightly different path. It takes us behind the stage of immigration policy to open a side door into the formalized informality of marginalized labor and professionalized storytelling supporting the practice of asylum seeking. The hardships of marginalized labor become the subtext of conversation at English for Empowerment classes held at Adhikar, a non-for-profit Nepali community center located a short way from the popular Little India neighborhood in Jackson Heights, Queens. Adhikar is where Tina Shrestha has her ears opened to discourses of suffering, dukkha, in Nepali. In her role as a volunteer English for empowerment teacher, Miss Tina interacts with Nepali labor migrants, predominantly women. While attending classes to improve their English language skills, the students regularly drift into conversations about their suffering, speaking about ways that they try to avoid confrontation or humiliation with their employers and their sadness from being away from family in Nepal for long periods of time. Through such conversations, Shashla begins to pick up on more nuanced registers of suffering, however, as students retrospectively describe their early years in New York referring to it as a time of greater suffering. Importantly, the difficulties endured in these early years were not being attributed to work conditions, which is what Tina Shrestha expected. Rather, they were perceiving this time period as challenging because they were applying for asylum while working precarious jobs as domestic workers, live in nannies, grocery stores, shelf stalkers, and restaurant workers. Indeed, in an irony that is not lost on Shrestha's student interlocutors, many continue to work in precarious or marginalized employment even after achieving asylum or other legalized forms of migration status. It is in these dialogic encounters at Adhikar that Shrestha also learns to interpret silences as signs of suffering. Narbada Didi, a leading figure at Adhikar, explains to Shrestha, quote, sister, to know about Nepalis living in America, you have to first understand how Nepalis have been surviving here by selling their suffering silently. Selling suffering, Shrestha tells us, is key to survival in the sanctuary city. Asylum seeking is presented in the ethnography as one technique in a wide repertoire of survival strategies undertaken by Nepali migrants searching for ways to legalize their status in the United States to achieve recruitment into the workforce and reunify families separated by migration. By the end of Shrestha's first period of 24 months of, of fieldwork, um, this is in 2012, 403 out of 750 asylum applicants from Nepal were, from Nepalis were approved. This makes Nepalis one of the top eight nationalities to receive asylum 
and the only nationality to have over 50% of applications approved. However, despite the positively trending numbers, there is never a guarantee of success in an asylum claim. Behind every application is the mind-bending, physically exhausting labor of making paper, kagaz banami. Making paper is shorthand for the protracted process of legalizing status. In the asylum-seeking context, making paper involves filing documents, sure, but it also incorporates the preparations claimants undergo to sell their suffering, including repeated interviews with lawyers and sometimes with fixers to determine credibility and to fashion a self-presentation and asylum narrative called a testimonial construction, which they can deliver to a judge deciding asylum cases. Sleepless nights are spent memorizing what lawyers instruct are vital details of claims, even as asylum seekers continue working in marginalized and informal sectors of the U.S. economy. Appointments at lawyer, off lawyer offices and courts often interrupt work schedules and threaten claimants with losing hard-won jobs. But they are given priority because claimants can never be sure which aspects of their case will make an impression on a judge or a prosecutor. For example, the mention of an isolated area that happens to have a tea shop in sight during one claimant's testimony completely throws his case overturning months of diligent preparations by the claimant sharing. However, for others, the hard work of Kagaj Banani is rewarded with asylum, although it is not necessarily interpreted as the end of suffering. As Shrestha astutely observes, asylum is pursued by claimant workers, it's her term, who navigate a continuum of dukkha, she tells us as the protracted labor of making paper for asylum is met with anxiety in the present and the anticipation of more sleepless nights worth of paperwork in the future. For the truth, following Nina's phrasing, is that the production of a good story for asylum hinges on the formation of a subjectivity aligned with the kind of precarious worker demanded by the U.S. economy. Claimant workers, in this sense, are being disciplined through the asylum process, emerging as competent and compliant labor participants. The collective suffering of the Nepali migrant community making paper in the sanctuary city is made visible to us as a consequence of Shrestha's unique ethnographic position as a participant interpreter. As described in the introduction to the book, Shrestha's relationships to participants were mediated largely through her labor as a volunteer English language teacher and as an interpreter for asylum claimants and their legal advocates. Immersed in the act of interpreting, Shrestha's ethnographic sensibilities become sensitive to incipient meanings and loud silences in her conversation with Nepali claimant workers migrants and lawyers. The intersubjective production of ethnographic knowledge is fully articulated in scenes described in the asylum backstage, such as when Shrestha reveals how the rhythmic sound of lawyers scribbling on notepads while talking to their clients help to direct the client's narration and Shrestha's interpretation moving them back and forth towards subjects of suffering that the lawyers can imagine, visualize, and hence write down or mark in their construction of the claimant's asylum stories. The power of these interpretive scenes, such as the ones described in, in my remarks, prove that Sanctuary City is necessary reading really for any anthropologist or critical immigration studies scholar invested in the divergent Nepali lives unfolding in the United States. But Shrestha has aimed for her ethnography to be more than reading material for 
training students um, or in addition to an academic's full bookshelf, or in my case, the bookshelf I am attempting to, to fill up with books like this one. This is a book that needs to make noise beyond scholarly circles because it challenges current U.S. immigration policy. Claimant worker Purnima, reflecting on her asylum process, tells Tina Shrestha, quote, my life story has become a piece of amusement for people. I have become an amusement for everyone, for my own relatives and lawyers, and perhaps to you too, no? I'm an amusement even to myself these days. Speaking Purnima's story out loud reveals the logics of U.S. immigration enforcement and asylum legalization. And telling Purnima's story and those of the others in this ethnography assures that suffering no longer has to happen in silence. Thank you again for giving me such a great opportunity to closely read this ethnography and to have the time to dwell on its on its pages and its arguments. I do have one small question for Dr. Shrestha, and it has to do with the participant interpret, interpreter um, methodology of the book. At several points in the book, and this will become apparent to anyone who picks it up, you'll notice that there is lots and lots of, of dialogue and, and recorded speech in English and then also translated for us into, into Nepali. And as I was going through the introduction and some of the end notes, I was looking for a, de a description about the decisions around the, around the quotes and whether or if the quotes were direct speech transcribed from interviews or whether they were represented speech um, reconstructed from, from memory or from, from field notes or other um, kinds of, of jottings. And this has to do um, with sort of Kita Banani, or how does one write a book? And there's a slight verbatim transcribed dialogue and reconstructed dialogue. And so much of this book is, is narrated in the words of the different asylum claimants and, and other migrants. And so I was just curious about the veracity of some of those, some of that dialogue, um, if it was reported speech, if it was recorded speech, or if it was reconstructed speech, and the differences and nuances between those in the text. So I appreciate the opportunity again to to give my thoughts and remarks on this on this excellent book, and I will go ahead and silence myself so that you all can go ahead and enjoy the discussion. Thank you again so much, and Dr. Cresta, I look forward to meeting you in the future. Thank you, Amy Lightbody. Uh, Namaste and Amy go prasla go utar wale dina. Aile mere bichar ma chay. Anti ma dina ramlo. Lakhi na wale aile ande dere pura suni sakhe. So we'll go for Q and A, and then what's your last ma? At the end, you will also answer uh, Amy's question. Floor is now open. Taba go for the question sabani. Taba le pusta tapo nu wapas hai na. Taba based on uh, what you have heard from author herself and also the commentator. Tabar ko apno ke prasna saavani bani ki tab ko baare ma asylum seeking ko baare ma author ko aile ko U.S. ko changed political context ko baare ma whatever you want to tabar ishte ke prasna saavani. I mean, tabar ko answer. So, uh, giving a little context for myself, my father uh, resides in the U.S. and he went through the same process. So. Uh, I have two questions for you. Uh, one would be like, uh, you told about covering the wounds, like the wounds of uh, the trauma of suffering and all. Uh, do you, uh, in the book, do you cover the wounds that have been suffered by the families here in Nepal as well? Like through interviews or like, through some sort of way, like uh, mm -hmm. has it been covered? And uh, uh, also about the notion of whole immigration uh, process and all and between the immigrants itself. Like, has it been changed uh, post uh, 2015 earthquake? Because like a lot of the immigrants were being able to uh, come to visit Nepal through TPS or some process. Mm -hmm. okay. so, should I take that? Okay. I think it's good to take. It's good, yeah. But then I'll forget otherwise. <laughs> Suffering. Um, well, I think I'm interested to learn more about 
your father's experience, first of all. Uh, uh, yes. Yes. When you asked, like, is it a little asylum claim? Yes. Uh, so, you went to the US, uh, I think it was in 2005 or something. I was born that year. So, uh, so he went to the uh, U.S. in 2005, he filed for an asylum, but his uh, uh, asylum petition was denied. Then uh, he, was, he was residing in Houston at the time. He went to, the, he went to California and uh, I think he went to the employment-based immigration, something like that. So now he has a green card. So not to asylum, but employment. Yeah. Uh, okay. But your question was actually the suffering inflicted by families. Yeah, okay. inflicted on families. Of on families. And I think that's, that's, that's an excellent question also because I only talk to people who are already there. You know, once families are there, I did not. So I don't. But then in the asylum, mm -hmm. the uh, interviews, guard the process, now they have to bring up certain issues, personal issues. Maybe they. Some things that they might not have wanted to share, but they would have to a certain. So to he sadly, yes, I was privy to Kiki Hoyati, but then I sort of seen really focused on the ways in which, because I know this person, I don't know their families in the context of that. Um, but that's an interesting question because with this book, that's exactly what I'm trying to do as well. So the families who are here, you, I'm sure you talk to your dad, or, you know, like the rest of us who talk to relatives. But the day to day, you know, like where would you start? Our legalized paper would like Because until you live there, it's like you're not viscerally, like a political context, the way it affects day to day. It's very much more difficult to articulate for that form. And then most of them, I think, like people I know, wouldn't actually discuss, go into details. Families, like, you know, why make them worry? They're not going to understand, they're not going to have a context, so it's just going to make it worse. So, I mean, they really literally don't have time. Like, just wake up, go to work, two, three jobs, and then you're doing this, and you're going to literally. So, there are a lot of other, um, so in that sense, um, that's an interesting project for you too, <laughs> actually, because, you know, they're left to be, I mean, there are a lot of literature on migration, like left behind children, left behind families, and then the whole of a, uh, Gambada youth are gone. It's, this is the US. My current work is on like, inter Asian migration to Malaysia, Japan. So, you know, it deals, it's starting to see the, those sort of the, uh, the silences there. So, so, this is also actually an effort to say, okay, maybe it's not exactly what happened to everybody, but the kind of um, silences that remain, the families, um, the context when, when you're not there day to day, what, you know, and as a ethnographer, I had the luxury to literally go out in a dos so things have changed, this is the bad, so then you think, oh, maybe this is it. So that connection hopefully would be picked up by people like you, <laughs> you know, who have relatives and the kind of suffering that the ones who are gone, they might not know. So that, you know, that's an excellent project, I would say. Second question, post 2015, so the book ends with data into 2012, 2013, but I did go back. Uh, I mean, I went back in 2016, especially 2019, that's other uh, TPS, so the or they were, the TPS fairly renewal. So that's like another kind of the, the liminal uh, legality. So you need to keep fighting for it. So they're, they were doing that and they got the extension for TPS. So that I know. Um, in a strange way, so what I um, collected then is more relevant already. <laughs> Because of yeah, what's happening, I, I'm not. I don't live in the U.S., so I don't have that the distance factor. Families who experience kibayi that's a matter of like all of you, they can suffer. Unless I go there and actually interview, I would not know. But TPS, yes, Adhikar has been fighting. And another thing that they did uh, was the when he came after he left, there were nails alone workers in New York City, the tri-state, right? There a lot of nails alone. Uh, shops and, and the kind of chemicals they use. So there are other workers' rights issues that they're working besides just legalization. But, uh, so yeah, I don't know. That's the question. So I see, and that's a great question. Uh, none of you suffering to put up in the book. Paper, <coughs> paper making a very long time. Like it, that you should know about. Uh, do I participate in interpretation? You understand. 
मतलब कि लगे अब लमो सफर को टीपीएस को चिंता हो तर ये गए तो मानेह को हेल्थ संबंधी इंटरप्रिटेशन कल लैंग्वेज तो अब अनेक थरीका के कैसे को लैंग्वेज राम हो हेल्थ जस्ट इश्यू में बुझा सकने न सकने ये किसिम को अवस्था हो हेल्थ कवरेज में हेल्थ को विषय में यहाँ को कवरेज इस बारे लैंग्वेज को लैंग्वेज अलग सीखने व्यवस्था नेपाली नहीं करें जो मैं बुझे सकते भादा खेल कति को पर्याप्त हो कति समय होने सकता सो सोर्ट आंसर मैं डिपली हेल्थ बिरामी तर आई डू नो अ फ्यू पीपल अब इवन डॉक्टर्स गाइनोकोलॉजिस्ट हर हेल्थ फील्ड में धेरे रिटरप्रेट प्रोवाइड कर मेरे बुक ने डाइरेक्टली करें डील करते हैं तर इंटरप्रेट कर स्कूल में हेल्थ में है हस्पिटल में टाखने रो तो टाइम में धेरे को थे अलग को एक्चुअली कंटेक्स में देज एक्चुअली डॉक्टर भी सुने कति को वहाँ को अब चीज अ मेडिकल डॉक्टर है इंटरप्रेटर बुझाने लगे सजिल हो तर कति रिच हो मैं तो बारे ठा छेन अभी एक्चुअली अधिकार माइट हेव म नलेज अस काम कर हेल्थ प्रोफेसनल्स में तो टाइम में अगर वो तब कोशन बिल कर हेल्थ भी राख्य फेयर एन्युअल फ्री हेल्थ फेयर मैं तेज बारे में लेखी तर सो नेपाली डॉक्टर्स जो ईस्ट कोस्ट में बस्टन न्यूयॉर्क अभी हमी भाई अधिकार को भलेंटिर्स सब अर्गनाइज कर फेयर अभी सुरू सुरू भाई तैंदी अरुण सुरू भाई सो फ्री हेल्थ अलग कि मैं ठा पैन सो काइंड अफ जस्ट बेसिक हेल्थ अभी दैट्स दैट्स माई पॉइंट ऑल्सो कि जब स्टेट ने प्रोवाइड कर कम्युनिटी हेज टू रिजनल डाइवर्सिटी एथनिक डाइवर्सिटी लिंग्विस्टिक क्लास डिफ्रेंस न्यूयॉर्क में वेस्ट अभी सो ने कति यू नो आई वाज टोल्ड कति जानले तपाई को नेपाली एंड दैट वाज यू नो अनदर शॉकिंग रिवेलेशन ओ सो यू नो देयर इज अल्सो द क्वेश्चन अफ प्रिभिलेज पनि आउँछ त्यही एन्ड द इंटरप्रिटेशन ल्याङ्ग्वेज लेभल मा धेरै नै छ तर वन एस्पेक्ट इज इट्स नॉट राइट मा सप्लिमेन्ट सानो सेको सप्लिमेन्ट मा चाहिँ हुन्छ कि सो राइट हो भने किसिमको कुरा पनि आउँछ नि चाहिँ अब इसलाम वाला त्यो ह्युमन राइट को कुरा पनि आउँछ तर अब तो गोपनीयता हे भादा खेल लोकल कम्युनिटी एडमिनीस्ट्रेशन का काउंटी काउंसिल हो रेस्पोन्सिबिलिटी अथवा रेस्पोन्स ये अनडकुमेंटेड अथवा इन द प्रोसेस अफ डकुमेंट भाई मानेह सहयोग भाई खाले के कस्त एटिच्यूड हो यहाँ रिडिंग न्यूयॉर्क को कंटेक्स में भन्न कि यूएसक सो लट अफ माइग्रेन एक्टिविस्टर ग्रासरुट्स अर्गनाइजेशन जो हेल्थ केयर अर्गनाइजेशन थी माइग्रेन कम्युनिटीज डिफ्रेंट डिफ्रेंट सोशल दे वर प्रोवाइडिंग दैट सपोर्ट तर अनडकुमेंटेड एक्चुअली न्यूयॉर्क इवन पेपर सो पाइन इफ यूर सिक यू गोर द हस्पिटल है तब डॉक्टर भेटने दे कान लिगली दे कैनट आस्क यू कि खास तब डकुमेंट तब पेपर छोड़ना तर कैंला मानेह ठा होते हैं अभी इट 
सो एटा कोविड को आई वज एंड देयर कोविड को टाइम में एक दिन मैं नवरात्रि संगे कुरा आई हेव आई हेन डन प्रपर इंटरव्यू तो है तर तस्तुत इन डकुमेंटेड दे थट ओके रिस्ट्रिक्टेड इमिग्रेशन तब ठैक्क ट्रम्प पच्चीस अल दिस हाफ ट्वेंटी सिक्सटी में तो है सो जत्तीक यू नो दस वर्ष अगर जे भाग फ्लिप रहा जैसे तब ट्वेंटी सिक्सटीन पच्चीस एंड देन ट्वेंटी सिक्सटीन टू ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी में रिस्ट्रिक्टेड पूरे झंझन व्यक्ति को नजाने पार्कस मोर एम टी तस्त सो दैट्स वन अफ द रिजन्स कि कोविड ने एक्चुअली कम्युनिटी क्या एक्जैक्ट नंबर था छेन मैं कस्त तर दे वुड गो इवन सी मेडिकल हेल्प तो कोविड पैला भैरा थी क्योंकि डकुमेंट नए डकुमेंट सो दिवन रिपोर्ट कर And my question is like uh, the distinction and dif- differences between and the US and Japan because recently you were you know doing big work in Japan also so you did a uh, participate observation in the US as a translator you said but uh, what is uh, the way to do research uh, field work in Japan mm. and depending on methodology like uh, do you feel some difficulty in, in uh, you know doing field work in Japan So because our you know like policy for immigrant and refugee is very strict so so do you feel like some difficulty for the you know doing field work in the US this is my question uh, excellent <laughs> question thank you <laughs> so i would uh, i mean i have a lot to say about that but first in japan i'm actually looking at student migration okay. so student visa not uh, asylum because i'm useless there if anything nepali into locutors would be my teachers yeah atim lani sikon pari ab ke matra bhani ah we have issues going on we can't be interpreting for you okay. so so methodologically that has been interesting okay. you know so i i've been having to also relearn um in a new place new society where well, i've just left actually so during my stay and most of it was covid time so um i, I don't want to go into this project that uh, basically i did uh, so it's mostly student mobility mm-hmm. Uh, but i look at japan i uh, article just came out where i to help um, japan ha- doesn't have immigration law labor yeah. migration yeah. but student visa internship yeah. you already the titp all these programs exist uh, and especially with student visa language institutes these are intermediaries so the hongo gakko se hongo gakko there and yeah. how they channel um, from here to hongo gakko so the So I'm looking at that. So it's still I'm I'm not done with that research. And but in Japan I was interviewing yeah the, uh, the yeah, student this one the infrastructure aspiration yeah yes. yeah so oh, thank you for I just want to ask about it. So that that uh, so that was actually uh, I looked at the manpower agency so the low wage labor uh, migration to Malaysia specifically recruitment for Malaysia and then after being in Japan I realized something similar is happening student recruitment Okay. But still going into low wage labor sectors and people yes. know and the dilemmas of that. Mm-hmm. Um so I've actually just had an article on um what I call casualties, infrastructural casualties just Japanese um Nepali students in um sort of a casual casualization of the student workforce in Japan. And it doesn't only apply to Nepali as you know elsewhere too. So my first interaction in Nepali with Nepalis in Japan so every 7-11 yeah um and all of that and the shinoku booth where i ventured and talked to people but uh i haven't <coughs> covid sort of stopped that and i started doing zoom um okay interviews Zoom-Zoom. with people who were also they're studying from home and saying i'm sort of waiting for my visa and now they're there but there's a backlog so that that's still a new project and um so the thing is in japan i was in uh i have lived there i don't have the language competence so it would be a very different kind of methodology i obviously cannot interview the teachers i took japanese language class <laughs> um so it, it would be a, it had to be very different methodologically thank different for, uh, thank you for asking <laughs> asking that I, mean, okay. yeah. I i won't read the use of publication uh, written about japan <laughs>
in the future. Thank, Thank you very you. much. interesting question. Uh, um, so maybe I guess I'll ask you to clarify background co question for me. The background background co is Like, is it a political uh, violence, domestic violence? So the, some of this, I mean, most of them, as I think you already know, Maoist. Maoist vote, and then the royalties uh, were the Maoist Paramat as well because they're royalists, so they're after them. Mm -hmm. So, those were the, the political uh, claims. Sorry. And then, 2000, I think, my interview uh, uh, research going time my domestic violence, funny asylum category in Almatali. So, this is 2009, gang violence through Central America. So, two penny provision, boy, you know, this is two cases of any I. Well, mostly the female, the male, the political claims. So the booklet they say actually tries to argue key that they go, um, you know, you're putting onus on people to tell a story, but you already have a template. Political violence, you know, you have to format and then you also the interview experts and uh, uh, um, even anthropologists certainly when they become expert uh, writers and um, commentators so I, I talk about that book imaginable suffering actually it's it's all it's actually about the unequal the hierarchical relationship to, from the very beginning so you know, if this works then I will perform this way so that the, the performance are affected by the intersubjective of the clean sentence age of girlism. So, or could those who are keen on it, no problem. And I'll give you I mean, the short answer is, I finished my PhD. Can't follow like you have to write an academic book. <laughs> oh, as all of us know, I know. They go, well, not too many. School. Sag plus nazi. Topoigli dissertation lay book must come from the academic. Right. No, no. The academic two months. You say, "Koti kosto halgo poribar zam gorumba, koti poris ram poriyo." To, to, you know, you different format, different leader, you know, different family, and like you have a case, right? So, to, to process to the So, you know, I'm going to put it in the only two. So, uh, dissertation actually is very different from the book. The Kagas Banami Dukha is there. The Ramayi Tsai Tiyatri, asylum of the Kiri officers, the lawyers are through. Rather than community co perspective at the living so the dissertation. So two leak youth of more I mean I finished and then quite a lot of distance for the boy person only body so it's no time for the body like you ruminate reflect body it's interesting because of the after stage like whatever stage you're in and the kind of books you're reading all data my all data asylum my you know and then I realized the asylum all of it was exactly made a dissertation just the link you know you anthropologist documents cost the so document uh, documents cost the life of documents are cost the witness preparation or that cost the those were already there so what was missing is like what can Nepali case say about this asylum very only uh, specific pun narrow pun you got deep now but at the same time you can comment about the structural issues only that um, that that is my hope key uh, like asylum infrastructure say. Usually, a popular debate that may answer border borders and border crosses when the asylum be you know? So, popular debate matter policy debates are usually two matter answer. Zoom say that they have border enforcement on sending AC immigration go asylum be you know? What I <coughs> observe the time that people are writing about interior enforcement, borders within the country, you know, not physical borders, visible borders, Mexico, but Texas, but sorry, for Arizona, Sonora Desert, Hanya. You know, within the social life day to day, what kind of borders exist, and you know, what kind of um, social control uh, you, and 
asylum the immigration infrastructure what 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 are interior enforcement channels so then sure. maybe if you're interested in the adjacent delay on another apologies while it's a habitual suffering commandments of the suffer nali um border crossers in arizona but also some by the focus on the border crossers caravan i would look for sir but the actual people crossing in your lead told me you know from luga bottle the, the material energy for so and the one who um Th- that that was very inspiring to be part of the header it's like so similarly to materials and the you know, like were existential questions now compared to you know while it's in um the bottles are room thode ko man to go you know uh environment the harsh environment arizona that you know how they then so environment pan work to enforce you know you don't need police say man you know the environment actually deters not deters but actually controls population but a harsh environment back cold you know they have a lot of garbage so they would just die anyway and that is the the problem so the oil uh, little people have taken up these habitual suffering and you know normalized suffering has because they don't so and so that was a very interesting the land of goods and the, so, uh, so you know so basically my one of my basic question that like, so i had chance to read others and engage hey, this is not just only asylum only nepal diaspora but larger immigration enforcement for uh, then i you know, then plus i had a lot of field notes but like you know i was also trying to figure out bindin came by that so uh, maybe this is a good place to respond to amy's okay. question too what so, is very interesting you know what question on transcription kati boy participant interpreters mere methodology um the very kind of anthropology method Hunga familiar with the thoughts, and usually the participant observation, participant observation comes out. Right? So, only two years of research. Only two. So okay. So participant, when I say interpret, go and back here. So I talk about how it was not at all. You know, we research go and go. So we know. So I have to participate. Not to go. So I observe go and go. I have no chance to observe. Let's sit and think and mull. But it was so visceral and sort of non-stop. This part, see, I I had to write it down to process. Uh, what happened because i was also in the midst of it if that makes sense too you know after le- long after i had finished the case i, I never thought about writing specific cases or because they were long after i had all these data so some of them were um transcriptions you know i mean i would verbatim just come back that i got thing on that interview back and forth back and forth it's in my head it's in the memory so i just would write others say uh, to record he had recorded not recorded that are made a reconstructed memories in one go so combination of that and some of the cases malay auntu ikina wale there were cases where people were asked to write diaries okay in the my longer life one one of course business stage one is zoom time not that i live one it's in 26 na mau babile duku de 22 24 2004 one the time ma timu ke ke bhathi likham so they were writing in nepali so i had to even to translate pani god back here i had you know ani so obviously only people who wanted me to know i want you to tell my story got to go garo and so it has been so the dozens i don't write i don't talk about it but mostly it's a uh, i would say reconstructed memory the two or good third say ke bhanchu bhane kina bhane um kati jana maile people i met through adhikar they had also gone through asylum okay? so they actually did interview so i had the one go verbatim say mina didi that she talks about truth is simple my story is not but the after 2 years was bad got happened when you like how about see you know so my um, interpret got to one that as people got to know what i did outside of the guy and it's a okay so this is my story and then so one with a more of a written usually to interpret got me that say um so participant interpreter was challenging so that that methodology i think i'm still It just to expand this. It's very common to see that when we start to reflect on the things that we've been talking about, so that way, as the interview with me about the asylum seeker Clement or go see the Kura Kani go that Kiri, how do they perceive you? You go that important boy, you know. That way, like the last time, that way, let's say, when you have to, who is able to ground the rear or any especially about. त्यो पनि चेन्ज भयो होला समय क्रम जाँदा के हेरे सुरुमा डिस्ट्रस्ट पछि ट्रस्ट को इश्यूजहरु आए होला तर हाउ डू यु हाउ डिड यु ग्रैपल विथ द सिचुएसन अथवा त्यो त्यो इवोल्युसन कस्तो खालको थियो अनि तपाईको आफ्नै रिसर्चमा त्यसको कस्तो खालको 
impact Costa on your brand? So well, I can, maybe... you've already answered your own question. The distrust by Lani, no? and also, I mean, I was aware of you, unequal to you. So she, people are also gauging you. Okay, Some people did speak English, but still wanted an interview. So different reasons for that. Um, and in Kinawane, I had already been working with Adhikar, <coughs> uh, migrants, uh, <coughs> workers' rights, or the unequal issues in Key on you know, my day-to-day -day from work employment. Um, for me, it wasn't. Um, it, it was kind of clear. Key, I'm I'm an advocate. I think two time. Uh, uh, so lately, we were decided already. Then I, I, I you know, I've been shy away from saying, oh, because people all over Nepal are just interested in that. So I'm thinking about so I say, oh, I have an ethical issue going to. Different different reasons, one article, different school of thought of the experience they got that. While I I was again, I think Amy also put it very nicely, it's not the veracity of truth, you know, but the imagine of suffering. Who man who okay, who are asked to show their vulnerability when you meet your new others? To the level of man. Yeah. You don't usually want to do that with unless you know somebody and you're able to share it. But it's the funny so for me it was like always that the violence. The structure of violence when I'm not signing with you. You had to not, it doesn't matter truth, false, cost of halkot, or how they are put in those positions but. to say certain things that the person who's deciding about their lives well, yeah. can be seen as truth, if that makes sense. You know? So, so that, that, that became more important uh, uh, for me. Yeah. Ooh, three questions. Yeah. Government <laughs> Government government Hmm. Human rights lawyers, uh, asylum lawyers, I'd like. So, my Miro Apno presentation, your United States citizenship and um, Kibanzo, citizenship and immigration <laughs> services, <laughs> naturalization, USCIS. The department could be seen at I presented, like groups as they. So, only at a policy level, but they were interested. That they knew. It, can, I'm also not saying that uh, lawyers are like Saji but the, as an individual, they. As a social position, they were they had their job, they were also working in their company promotion So I only presented Duchati, they were responsive. And then the also the, every time this was to 2022, 21, sorry, 2021 to 22 uh, Change by that the government. I think administration cost open, so they it'll depend on that. So they were very open and saying, Yes, we need classes, we need policy or quick help with you. We need policy over here, need a research level butter. So when I said, Well, the bureaucracy could do immigration bureaucracy, the owner of the body familiar, so and then. The same they could resonate here the backlog, asylum backlog in Agosto. So I mean, if I were to continue interviewing asylum officers, mm -hmm. that would be the next step. But uh, so far it's saying um, I hope you know that it would make some kind of um, uh, mm -hmm. impact I, I don't know, but uh, something that they will stop and think. He you're doing your job and these people who are under you are making these claims. Their lives are sort of hanging in this, uh, in a limbo state. Yeah. Right? And, and the whole community because of the effect on so many, but active visibility, I think, would, is, is an important, at least, a path to opening that dialogue. Uh, and plus, 
no, Nepali, oh no, Nepali is a reason why Bossy could they, they don't know, and so I didn't know, unless research methodically got it, this, this, this situation, space is never either. So I'm also hoping actually that the Nepalese in the US will find it useful and say, hey, you know, this is what's happening. And to actually have a conversation about privilege, people who earned the degrees, had work, but didn't have to go through this, but you know, different to legal legalities, I would say, because the splinter of are as, as a community, so what are the challenges? Um, and I think that's enough. Yeah, hopefully, the two conversations can host one and have gone. Next week, say, I mean, a Nepal to energy mix, why and how, but it also was meant to. The book, or maybe I should make an announcement. Okay, you South Asian, South Asian edition. Say Manoar books on the Delhi Bato, they procure Taranya Vajrama. Yeah, I'm hoping wisdom up on it. Indian edition, okay. So, so Monor, let's have you ready. South Asian edition, Monor, let's have you ready. 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 Let's have